You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban Grip. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict Number no. 37 of 2017, amending some provisions of Edict 5 regarding the establishment and formation of the National Committee on the Prohibition of Development, Production, Stockpiling, or Use of Chemical Weapons and the Destruction of Such Weapons. The National Committee has been restructured under the chairmanship of the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the following membership a representative of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, representative of the Bahrain Defense Force, representative of the Ministry of Health, representative of the Civil Civil Defense General Director in the Interior Ministry, Representative of the Customs Affairs in the Interior Ministry, Representative of the Electricity and Water Affairs Authority, a representative of the National Oil and Gas Authority, Representative of the Industry, Commerce and Tourism Ministry, a representative of the Supreme Council for Environment, and a representative of the Work, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning Ministry, a representative from the University of Bahrain. The edict also stipulated the duration of their membership team will be three years, renewable for a similar period if the position of any member becomes vacant for any reason, it will be replaced by the representative from the same department to complete the tenure of his predecessor. The committee, in its first meeting, will choose its deputy chairman from its members, who will assume the jurisdictions of the committee chairman in case of the latter's absence. The edict defined the duties and powers of the said committee, adding more to them. The committee will submit its annual report to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, including the results of its business and recommendations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs will submit the report to the cabinet. The edict can cancelled edict number 30 of 2014. The ministers, as per the jurisdiction of each minister, will implement this edict, which becomes effective from the date of its issuance, which will also be published on the official gazette. The Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and the Commander of the Royal Guard's Special Force and Commander of the Kingdom's Guards One Joint National Drill, His Highness Major General Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa witnessed the conclusion of the joint drill which was held in Sif Mall. Present were a number of security and military officials and experts from Bahrain, France, and the U.S. Forces from the Bahrain Defense Force, the Ministry of Interior, and the National Guard took part in the drill to consolidate joint military and security work as a basis for combating terrorism and maintain the safety and security of the homeland. The commander of the Kingdom's Guards 1 Joint National Drill delivered a speech on the occasion. الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة قائد الحرس الملكي مدير التمرين الوطني حرس المملكة واحد أصحاب السمو السادة الحضور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بداية نشيد بدعم سيدي الوالد حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد المفدة القائد الأعلى حفظ الله ورعاه ودعم سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول رئيس مجلس الوزراء وتوجيهات سيدي صاحب المعالي المشير الركن الشيخ خليفة بن أحمد آل خليفة القائد العام لقوة الدفاع البحرين في نجاح التمرين الوطني المشترك لمكافة ترحاب حرس المملكة واحد كما تقدم بجزيل الشكر والعرفان لكل من ساهم في هذا التمرين من القوة الدفاع البحرين والحرس الوطني ووزارة الداخلية والنيابة العامة لا شك بأن موضوع الإرهاب أصبح الشغل الشاغل لمعظم دول العالم ودول المنطقة بشكل عام ومملكة البحرين بشكل خاص لذلك فقد تشكل مفهوم الإرهاب بمفهوم الجديد مما جعل القوات المسلحة لهذه الدول تعي بشكل كبير أهمية أعداد وتجهيز قواتها لمواجهة الإرهاب حيث أصبحت تساليب المنظمات الإرهابية جديدة ومبتكرة وأكثر احترافية بنيت فكرة مركز مكافحة الإرهاب المشترك على توحيد جهود جميع الجهات المعنية لمكافحة الإرهاب من حيث تنسيق التدريب والعمليات والإجراءات بشكل يضمن تطوير أساليب مكافحة الإرهاب والوصول إلى احترافية العمل المشترك من أجل القضاء على آفة الإرهاب والإرهابيين في مملكة البحرين والحفاظ على سلامة مواطنيها وسيادة أراضيها
After that, the organizer of the drill, Major General Ammar Ali, gave a briefing on the drill. After that, the drill commenced. The joint forces showcased excellence throughout the exercise, which reflects a high level of readiness, coordination and cooperation among the participating forces. A number of training sites and procedures were viewed since the beginning of the event until the completion of the drill. His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasr expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for their directives and support that aided the success of the drill in achieving its goals. His Highness also expressed thanks and appreciation to the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Commander of the National Guard, Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, for their role in the success of the Joint National Counterterrorism Drill, the Kingdom's Guards 1. His Highness hailed the efforts of the participating members in the drill and praised their outstanding performance, preparation, planning, and execution. His Highness thanked all all who aided in the success of the drill, among them the public prosecution as a legal legislator and the cooperation of the management of Sif Mall, wishing everyone further success for the benefit of the country. هذا التمرين الوطني الأول من نوعه حرس المملكة واحد تمرين يثلج الصدر حقيقة لنا كمسؤولين أمنيين في مملكة البحرين نرى ضباطنا وأفرادنا يطبقون على مستوى مشترك في جميع الأجهزة الأمنية موجودة في مملكة البحرين هذا تدريب كان صار له مدة ست شهور جمعنا هذه القوات كلها مع بعض تفاهمنا وحدنا مفاهيمنا والآن هذا هو الاختبار الأقصى لهم اللي هو اختبار واقعي أفراد عمرهم ما شافوا هذا المنظر ما كانوا يعرفون شنو السيناريو لكن اضطروا أنهم يتعاملون معه بكل واقعية وكل احترافية الحقيقة من جميع المراحل من ردة الفعل الأولى إلى الفرز القانوني والتشريع وإلى آخرة من هالأمور فهذه مراحل طويلة عريضة شهدناها اليوم والحقيقة أقول لك جماعتنا محترفين ولله الحمد. طبعا هي فكره استلهمناها من توجيهات سيدي حضره صاحب الجلاله ان الان احنا اصبحنا نواجه الارهاب بشتى اشكاله. ضروره اليوم توحيد المفاهيم والاتصال والقياده والسيطره مع بعضنا البعض سواء كنا قوى الدفاع وزاره الداخليه ام الحرس الوطني فهذا اصبح اليوم يعني واجب علينا ان احنا نقوم به ما دام عندنا الوقت وما دام عندنا القدره والطاقه فالحمد لله جات الامور بسلاسه بحكم القاده الموجودين اللي متفهمين الوضع هذا الذين هم يفهمون هذا العمل سهل لنا العمل والاجراءات كلها فاحنا كتبنا جميع الاوامر الثابته وحدنا مفاهيمنا كلها والان اليوم تشوف انت شيء صراحه نفتخر به من جميع الافراد اللي طبقوا في مجمع السيف طبقوا بشكل يعني فاق حتى توقعاتنا. طبعا بعد هذا التمرين هو مواصله التدريب في مركز مكافحه الارهاب التطوير وطبعا احنا كان عندنا مراقبين من دول عده في هذا التمرين وذو اصحاب خبره عاليه راح ناخذ تقاريرهم وراح نبني عليها، فاليوم المستوى المحترف اللي انت شفته راح تشوفه ان شاء الله ملمع اكثر باذن الله. الحمد لله على انجاز التمرين بنجاح. حبيت اني اشكر سيدي جات الملك على دعمه للتمرين هذا ومتابعته الدائمه. 
وطبعا يعني التمرين هذه لولا القياده العامه ووزارة الداخليه والحرس الوطني ولا ما ما كان استوى والحمد لله بجهد ومتابعه قائد الحرس الملكي اعطانا الدعم لانجاز هذه هذا التمرين اما بالنسبه عن اهميته ك كاختلاط القطاعات كلها مثل ما تشوف انت احنا اليوم في هالتمرين كقائد للتمرين ما كان يهمني التكتيك داخل المجمع كثر ما كان يهمني التنسيق واللي هو بداية هالمركز هذه كان أساسا للتنسيق بين القوات والقطاعات فالحمد لله هذا اللي أظهرنا اليوم حسن التنسيق بين القوات والاتصال الدائم بينهم وهذه كان جدا مهم بالنسبة لنا أما بالنسبة حق الأمور الثانية مثل ما تقول التكتيك والأمور يعني القطاعات الباقية هم تكتيكهم هذه نقدر إحنا نعالجها في التمارين نعالجها في الأمور الثانية أما بالنسبة للتنسيق والقيادات هذه كان أهم شيء عندنا اللي هو التحكم بين القوات طبعا إحنا مركز مكافحة الإرهاب هو فقط كان مجرد للتجربة إلى ما نقوم بتمرين نفس هذا إن شاء الله إذا إذا تم تمت الموافقة على المركز وتم التنسيق مع قوة الدفاع إن شاء الله فبيكون المركز استمارية التمارين المشتركة بيننا بين القطاعات كلها وإن شاء الله بنكون يعني تمرينين في السنة إن شاء الله تمرين كبير مثل مجمعات مدارس مستشفيات اللي يكون أو التمارين والتمرين الثاني يكون على مستوى أصغر ومجاميع أصغر الواحد مثل ما يقول ما يخاف من اظهار الامكانيات للخبرات اللي ويانا احنا اليوم كان عندنا اربع دول ويانا ف ناخذ من خبرتهم ناخذ من شنو رايهم في التمرين شنو رايهم شنو ممكن نطور فحطينا محكمين ومراقبين مع كل مجموعه مع كل قطاع ومن هالمراقبين هم يعطونا في النهايه البريف كامل اللي شنو احنا ممكن نطوره ونعدله في التمرين فاحنا الحين ان شاء الله بنقعد وياهم وبنتكلم ان شاء الله بناخذ نقاطهم وبنشتغل عليها ان شاء الله في المستقبل. Meanwhile, National Guards Colonel General Khalid Ermeithi said that the Kingdom's Guards Drill One helps the different national security agencies in playing their specific roles in combating terrorism through working together. Any internal uh, security or uh, military uh, agencies working in, 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 in one country, they have uh, sh or they should have one understanding to what happened. I, uh, I, I should know how the BDF working, how the MI working. So this uh, drill, I think, will, uh, you know, set the rules, okay, how to deal all together in any circumstances coming here. You know, the counter uh, or the, 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 the terrorist, they have a, a different uh, method, okay, uh, and they think of something you know uh, nobody can expect this is what we see and not just in, in in bahrain we see it on all the world okay so uh, the agencies should be work together on these uh, circumstances and uh, that any incident happened they uh, when they are coming on the scene everybody know his rules how to deal who's Come first, who's come uh, second? How uh, you know uh, they evaluate their communications, uh, their work on the field. So uh, this uh, drill is first time coming, or, or they it's done in Bahrain. And uh, from my side, uh, I wish this drill to be, you know, not just for the year, for the next years, because you know every every drill there are lessons. Coming from the drill, we learn it as an uh, organization, either in BDF, National Guard, or NMI. And uh, training is not stopped because, you know, uh, terrorists are not stopping to uh, make the thing not as being expected. And uh, I hope uh, from my side that all successful, successful for this training and drill. Thank you. 
Meanwhile, the Assistant Public Security Chief for Operations and Training Affairs, Brigadier General Hamad Mohamed Al Khalifa, said that the security officers must be equipped with the latest training requirements in order to be able to deal with different scenarios. He also highlighted the importance of drills to enhance the training capabilities of the Interior Ministry's officers in order to be able to further improve their work. Regarding the drills, um, yes, it's different situations, different uh, crimes, different uh, disasters. Mm -hmm. So we look around the world and we see what's going on new, uh, what happened, we watch around and then we train our people to deal with uh, such crises. Even the terrorism uh, act, it, it, is, it is a kind of crisis that we have to prepare ourselves. The latest uh, terrorism act happened in Bahrain was the explosion of the pipeline, yes. uh, the Bahraini Saudi pipeline, and the success of our people to control this matter and to uh, treat it within around two hours. And this line is one of the most important pipelines in the world. Uh, this gives us an indication. It didn't come from nowhere, no. It comes because of drills, it comes because of sending operation orders, uh, it comes because of um, wise leadership and good leadership. So we controlled the leakage, yes. we controlled the fire, we evacuated the village, yes. and we have uh, zero injury or loss in, 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 in uh, people. So this is something uh, we have actually to, to, to bring it to the public and show it everyone that we, we are capable of dealing with such a crisis and this was a terrorism act. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and honorary president of the Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure on the success of the Techno Disability Conference and Exhibition, which was inaugurated yesterday under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Khalid. The event, which coincided with the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, was held to identify modern solutions for people with disabilities. The conference was organized by the media office of His Highness Sheikh Khalid in cooperation with the Bahraini Sports Federations for Disabilities. His Highness noted the participation in the workshops held in the field of modern technologies, adding that the event aims to underscore the importance of providing support to people with disabilities. Sheikh Khalid expressed pride in the energy and abilities of people with disabilities, stating that they are a model of perseverance and determination. He added that more initiatives will be launched to meet the aspirations of people with disabilities and further develop their abilities. The MECAT conference was held in Bahrain for the first time today, organized by Euro Petroleum Consultants and Bobco in cooperation with the National Oil and Gas Authority. More in this report with Shoga Mohammed. Following the success of the BBTC MENA conference, the MECAT 2017 conference was held today. The Minister of Oil expressed his deep happiness in the embrace of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the first version of the series of conferences of the Middle East Catalyst Technology Conference, in regards to the good reputation enjoyed by the Kingdom on the world level in the conferences and event industry specialized in this area. This conference is about catalysts. They are an important part of the refining industry and the petrochemical industry. Uh, constant developments have uh, always been in uh, an important task in making sure that the economics of the refineries uh, get better and basically they are used to uh, convert crude oil and other feedstocks to more valuable products and yield is an important factor of catalysts of course they're made of precious metals uh, some rare earth metals as well those are regenerated, that's an entire industry as well. All of that is being discussed today. And Bobco, of course, is a big consumer of catalysts in both its FCC unit and the future expansion that will come. And it's important to get young Bahrainis interested in this. It's a chemical engineering discipline, chemistry, process engineering, all of that. It's important to get young Bahrainis into the sector. Many participants attended, from specialized technicians and engineers from various local, regional and international companies specialized in the field of catalyst markets, as well as the presence of a number of researchers and scholars in the specialization of the different countries of the world. 
Uh, today is the inaugural event. It's a MECAT, it's a Middle East Catalyst Conference, so it focuses on catalysts, whereas BBTC was more on technologies. Uh, catalysts are very important for the downstream sector because uh, with catalysts we can increase uh, margins, uh, increase uh, efficiency, and for refiners that's uh, very important in this day and age because uh, with relatively small investments you can gain competitive advantage. So we have the chance to uh, hear the latest developments in catalysis from all the catalyst providers, also management of catalyst, what you do with spend cat catalyst, which is very important, recovery of precious metals. So we're looking forward to it. It's going to be an interesting two days. The global catalyst market is expected to reach $33 billion by the year 2018. There are developments in the areas of refining and petrochemicals and chemicals, as well as environmental factors, which may have contributed to the growth and increasing demand for motivating factors in world markets. This conference is dedicated to catalysts, catalysts for oil refining and for petrochemical industries. And my presentation will be dedicated to overview of this market. It's a very important issue in current state because uh, now oil refining and petrochemical industry is developing very extensive. And the catalysts are the key points in this development because efficiency of the catalyst play a very important role for these processes. Because uh, now we have very difficult times for refining industry, for petrochemical industry because there are a lot of changes. Uh, crude prices are non-stable, uh, demand in petrochemicals is uh, very high and uh, the producers uh, should cover this demand to meet the local requirements on the local or on the international level. The MECAT 2017 conference will continue tomorrow here at the Four Seasons Hotel. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed. The Minister of Works and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, inaugurated the General Job Fair in the presence of Harag's governor officials and invited guests. A number of private sector institutions took part in the event to showcase vacancies in the administrative and technical fields as well as training opportunities for job seekers with various academic qualifications in coordination with Temkin. The fair is part of a series of exhibitions organized by the Labour and Social Development Ministry that comes under the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, to provide services for citizens and meet their needs. The fair aims to boost job opportunities, pump new national competencies into the labor market and the diversification of jobs. In line with the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities commitments to diversity and exchange of cultures with various countries of the region and the world, the National Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, opened the exhibition in the land of Dilmen, where the sun shines, which conveys treasures of the National Museum of Bahrain from the third millennium until the first millennium BC. BACA President Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, a number of senior officials in the cultural sector of the Russian Federation, and a group of diplomatic, cultural, and media figures were present. Sheikh Hamay expressed pleasure in showing the world the treasures of Dilmen and its historical significance dating back to the important era and a civilization that settled in the island for thousands of years. She added that the opening of the exhibition affirms the important role of culture and its importance in defining Bahrain's true identity. The exhibition included a collection of permanent artifacts belonging to the National Museum of Bahrain and contains some of the most important artifacts that have been found over 60 years ago by the archaeological works in Bahrain. The Hermitage Museum hosted the 2012 Tylus, A Journey Beyond Life in Bahrain's Cultural Days in Russia and this year's exhibition, which continues until March the 11th of 2018, is an opportunity for the BACA to showcase the heritage of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Russian and international audiences. The United Nations Women's Bahrain Program Office was officially inaugurated today in the presence of the Undersecretary General of the United Nations, Executive Director of the UN Women, Pomzeli Mlamgaka, and the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halal Ansari, at the UN House in Manama. Al Ansari delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the inauguration of the office in the kingdom is a result of the efforts exerted by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and empowering women. She reiterated the kingdom's commitment to implement the program of the UN Women in line with the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, particularly the fifth goal regarding gender equality and women empowerment. For her part, the Under Secretary General of the United Nations hailed the achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of women, expressing hope that the newly inaugurated office will reinforce joint cooperation regarding various women issues.
We're actually very happy and glad uh, for the opening of this office in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And it comes in line with um, uh, Bahrain signing the mem a memorandum of understanding with UN Women uh, a, a year ago. So this office is here today to look after this memorandum of understanding and to follow up on all the programs and the activities that we share with uh, UN Women. Well, uh, firstly, we're so glad that uh, today we are opening our office, uh, UN Women's office in Bahrain which does not mean that we have not been working here, but now we are formally and officially here with an office. We are going to be participating in supporting uh, the very ambitious and important uh, program of the government of Bahrain as part of the United Nations. We are focusing on women's economic empowerment. We are focusing on uh, mainstreaming uh, gender with a focal point in every ministry. We are focusing on gender responsive budgeting and we're focusing on ending violence against women. We are here also at a time of 16 days of activism, which is a global campaign. Every country in the world is uh, recognizing the challenge of violence against women. The campaign starts from the 25th of November to the 10th of December. So Bahrain was chosen this year as one of the countries that we will visit so that we can have a discussion with the partners on how we could work together to end violence against women. And I'm very happy that as we come here, Bahrain is looking at co co a collaboration on how we could use statistics to track the incidence of violence against women so that we can know exactly where it occurs, why it occurs and how we could stop it. Uh, today is a historic day for Bahraini women. Not only did we celebrate the Bahrain Women's Day last week, but the opening of the UN Women Coordination Office or Program Office here in Bahrain uh, came after the uh, signing of a memorandum of understanding between the UN Women and uh, the Supreme Council for Women. Uh, this office is go going to oversee Her Royal Highness Princess Sabiq Ibn Ibrahim Al Khalifa's Global Award for uh, Women Empowerment, which was launched recently, just last uh, March, at uh, the CSW in New York. Takatif is one of the most uh, important ingredients in women empowerment in Bahrain, and uh, the National Institution for Human Rights highly welcomes this initiative between the Supreme Council for Women and the Ministry of Interior. Uh, we also commend and hi highly welcome all the efforts by the Supreme Council of Women under the leadership of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, spouse of His Majesty the King, and all of the efforts taken uh, from the uh, or by the Supreme Council uh, uh, for Women with other uh, official and non-official entities. It's coming at a very timely moment, and as I've uh, said before, it's not only to work with and for Bahraini women and girls, but also to take the experience that Bahrain has done to the world. Uh, we all know before even the creation of UN Women, Bahrain has been working to foster the rights agenda for women and girls in the kingdom for the past hundred years. And it's just about time that we take it to the world.